Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. This is going to be part two of, uh, I don't know what, exactly what I'm going to title this video, but this is going to be part two of the City of Anderson tour. And on this video, I'm going to be driving through some of the more desirable places to live in the city of Anderson. Now basically I quit recording on my last video and I immediately pressed the record button for this video. So some of the areas that I'm driving through right now are areas that I've been on the last video. But I'm gonna just drive through those areas just to get to the areas just to get to the part of the city where I wanna be. Now, I had a little side note. Uh, I'm on Columbus Avenue right now. And I'll let you guys know when I get to a more desirable area here in the city. And also as a side note, if you're wanting to live in Anderson, I personally wouldn't want to live anywhere on Columbus Avenue. I mean, Columbus Avenue, it's a very busy street. And in my opinion, the neighborhoods that are off of Columbus are, they're not necessarily the worst in the city, but they're not the best either. And the rule of thumb, like the rule of thumb on this side of Anderson is, the closer you get to 53rd, the better the community is going to be. Like I'm on East 37th Street right now. Now this part of East Anderson is you know this part of east anderson is the better part of it's not the best part of east anderson but it's the better part of east anderson i mean this is a part of east anderson that if you're looking to live in the city of anderson and the money you have to purchase a home is less than 150 grand this is gonna if you it, like i'll put it to you guys like this if you're able to finance at least $100,000 for a home and you're looking to live in Anderson, this is one of those communities that I would suggest you guys come and check out. Now, this is still part of Southeast Anderson, but this is the better part of Southeast Anderson. Like the rule of thumb, like the rule of thumb is, if you're on Columbus Avenue,
the closer you get to town, the worse the neighborhood is. The more, the closer you get to 53rd, which is further away from town, the better the neighborhood is. Now this area, as you all can see, is nothing special, nothing fancy. I mean, basically, you just have a bunch of regular working class people that care about their community. They care about their, their, their neighborhood and everything. You don't got a bunch of garbage all over the place. You got kids outside playing. You don't got a bunch of people hanging out on the corner selling illegals. going down pit I just want to give you guys a reference of what part of East Anderson that used to be looking at houses in if you're looking to live in East Anderson or you see an address that's got an East Anderson address oh I'm, I'm passing up East 31st you look around the houses still look pretty decent. I'm approaching East 29th, which honestly, this is going, this is you going, this is going to want to be your cutoff. I mean, East 29th is going to want to be your cutoff. So remember, if you're looking at a house on the east end of Anderson, East 29th is your cutoff. So if you see an address that's East 29th and lower, and you have the means to buy in a better neighborhood, go ahead and buy in a better, go ahead and buy in a better area. So just remember, if you see a house that's located on East 29th or lower in the street number, Stay away. Now I guess if you're strapped for cash and you're looking just to own something, like I said, even then, like I told you on my last video, I wouldn't bother. It's not worth it. Because the amount of money you're going to pay in property taxes, you might as well go ahead and, and buy something on the west end of Anderson. Alright, we're gonna go back down the other way. I'm back on Columbus. Now I'm jumping on the 30th, East 30th. You know what? Honestly, if you see an address with East 30th, I wouldn't buy in this area either. So skip East 30th. I mean, I'm on East Lynn Street right now. So honestly, 
If you see an address that has East Lynn, skip it. Don't even bother. It's not worth your money. So, you know what? Well, I said a second ago about East 29th, scratch that. Honestly, I would say your safest bet would be to not buy anything that has an address number lower than 33, lower than East 33. So yeah, anything that's lower than East 33, I would skip. Okay, I'm gonna go down for uh, Terrence. Now, as I go down Forest Terrence, I mean, as you guys can see, if you look close enough, the yards are cleaner. Not quite as much garbage laying down. I mean, you still can see the garbage, but not as much as what you would have saw having you, when having I drove down, let's say, East 21st, like I did on my last video. And again, if you want to see more detailed videos of some of the neighborhoods I'm driving through, feel free to go on my channel and look for videos to where I have those sides of the city indicated. I'm getting ready to jump on the East 38th. Now, East 38th is a major road in the city of Anderson. It's relatively busy. And personally, if you're looking to buy a house on this street, if you don't mind dealing with uh, significant amount of traffic on a regular basis if you don't mind dealing with traffic noise i personally would not want to buy a house on this street only because of how busy this street is and up in front you got what's known as scatterfield road here in anderson it's also known as Route 9. Now, Scatterfield Road is a major, it's the major business, it's the major road where a lot of the businesses in the city of, of Anderson is located. It's, it's, a, it's a business district. It's a business district, basically. 
and uh, I'm gonna also go ahead and say that if you're looking for a good place to go out and grab you a bite to eat rather it be a chain restaurant or rather it be a restaurant authentic to Indiana or authentic to Anderson this that's gonna be the road where you're gonna want to go now there are other places that are decent but scattered field is where you're gonna find the majority of those type of places Now this is considered the northeast, I believe, side of Anderson. I don't want to just say east because you got northeast and then you got the southeast and there is a distinct difference between the two uh, parts of the east side of town. Now, if you come and visit Anderson and, and you don't and you're a gambler or you're looking for a place to just pass up a little bit of time and blow some of your hard work and money, I will gladly drive you guys by the casino. Now this is the casino. I'm gonna turn around that way you guys can see it a little better. All right, here's the city casino. It's a fairly good sized facility and it does employ quite a few people so if you're looking for a job and you don't want to have to drive real far to go to work assuming that you're wanting to live in Anderson I mean you know you do have the casino here and they do hire quite a few people Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that the pay is great. It probably isn't. But if you're just looking for a job, there you go. And of course here in Anderson, you do have quite a few factories in the city limits. 
you do got some factories and warehouses in the city limits and you also got plenty of factories and warehouses but over within a half hour of this city for those of you, for those of you that are looking for a job that might have a blue collar level education And that's, and, that's one, and that's one thing which I've always liked and appreciated about living in Indiana. Especially in cities like Anderson. I mean, if you don't have a college degree, if you're not the most creative person in the world, you're just looking for a job to make some money, pay the bills, put food on the table, and a roof over your head. That's one thing that, that Indiana has going good for itself. Rich is huge. Which for a lot of people is a big deal. The ability to, to take care of oneself. The ability to survive. I mean, here in Indiana, you ain't got to have no specialized degree. You don't have to have any type of creative juices. All you got to do is be willing to work. All you got to be, all you got to do is, is, is show up you know, do what you're told to do. And for the most part, you're going to have a job. You're going to be making your money. You're going to be able to pay your bills. You go a little beyond that, just a little. You're going to, you know, Indiana is one of those places where if you go above and beyond the basic, you know, the, the basics when it comes to work, this is one of those, I mean, you know, Indiana is one of those type of states where it's not going to be hard for you to get ahead. And now we're going to go back on Scatterfield because I want to show you guys some of Scatterfield. Now Scatterfield is a very long street, but I'm going to show you guys uh, a piece of it. Now, when you jump on Scatterfield, if you're looking to do some grocery shopping, you got Myers, which is on the other side of me. You got Walmart, which I'm getting ready to drive by in a minute here. You also got Payless, which is, I mean, Scatterfield basically is gonna go all the way from the south section of the city, all the way to the north, to the north section of the city. So like where I'm at right now, this is considered South Anderson. And if I stay on this road, it will take me all the way to the northern section of Anderson. Now, uh, if you're... You know, if you look, if you look at a house and this has, and it has a South Anderson address, or it's got an address that is very close to this road, I mean, uh, understand that that house is going to be in a, in a in a decent area. So if you get a house in this general area, you're you know you're good to go. Now there are areas around here that are relatively busy, especially during rush hour and also during uh, the, and after, I would say around, I don't know, maybe two or three o'clock in the afternoon when a lot of the kids get out of school. There's certain areas around here that can get rather busy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive you down this way and then I'm gonna turn my vehicle around and I'm gonna take you down the other way. That's what I'm gonna do. Just to keep it simple for myself in terms of recording this video. Okay, I'm on Scatterfield right now. I'm getting ready to jump off Scatterfield. 
and the first street we're going to drive down is going to be uh, 40, no, it's going to be 30, 39th, East 39th. Now, some people would say this is South Anderson. Some people would be more Pacific and say that this is Southeast Anderson. Now, if you want to consider this Southeast Anderson, this is the far Southeast Anderson section of the city. Okay, I'm going to turn down East 40th. And this is a this is one of those more desirable areas to purchase in the city. Is it the fanciest neighborhood? No. Is it the most expensive? Definitely not. However, this, this area that I'm driving through right now, this is a solid working class community. I would say at this point, I mean, I would say at this point, many of these houses are going for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So if you want to live in this particular neighborhood, I would say have at least a couple hundred thousand dollars to drop on a house and, and you should be okay. Now I'm gonna keep driving down the street and I'm gonna take you to a community to where the houses are a little cheaper, but the community is still decent. Oh, and another thing that, you, that, that you're gonna to wanna to bear in mind if you're gonna move here to Anderson is in fact, you, in fact, if you come and, and you uh, travel through Indiana, you're gonna find that many of your Indiana cities are gonna, uh, they're gonna have uh, railroad tracks that basically go right through town. So just, you know, just bear in mind if you got a relatively busy schedule you might want to go ahead and allow at least 10 extra minutes for commute time to your job or whatever for the train because you never know you could be out doing what you do and you know what we're going to drive down here real quick you could be out doing what you do and you might get stopped at the tracks by a train so if you so if you approach the tracks and you see a train, I uh, understand that you could be stuck there for 10 minutes. And I do mean 10 minutes. I mean, sometimes when you approach a train, it could be within a minute or two and you're good to go. But there's other times where if you approach a train, you could be stuck there for 10 minutes. 
Now these houses, they're a little smaller than the ones I've showed you a minute ago. What were these, some of them are? I was hoping I would be able to, to uh, no mind. Now I was said to live in this neighborhood if you're prepared to drop $150,000 on a house around here, you ought, to be, you ought to be good to go. Now, sometimes in these areas, you might be able to find something a little cheaper. Like you might be able to find you a fixer upper for 100, or you might be able to find you a foreclosure that's in decent shape for 120. But I would say to be on the safe side. I uh, plan to pay $150,000 in this particular community. I mean, this is a this is a relatively quiet community, solid work, solid working class community, which is right off of, which is all right off of Scatterfield. Now to show you the area that I want to show you guys, unfortunately I gotta wait for that train to pass, which looks like that train is just getting ready to pass, so I should be good.
I'm still on scatter field. And now I'm headed north. So, yeah, I'm, I'm headed north. And this area that I'm in right now is gonna be considered the northeast section of the city. I'm gonna go down 10th Street. And again, this is the northeast section of the city. Now in this area, your houses are gonna be a little smaller. The prices are gonna be a little lower. I will get you guys out of the sun in a minute here. I would say if you're wanting to live in this area and you're wanting a house that's turnkey moving ready. be prepared to spend at least $100,000. Now, if you're looking for something that's got a slightly bigger yard, or you're looking for something that's a little bigger in the square footage, then be prepared to spend $120,000. But I would say at the minimum, if you're gonna live in this neighborhood, have at least 100,000 bucks. Okay, right now, I am driving down Chester Street. Now, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go down these state. And by the way, I'm traveling away from town because if I turn my vehicle around, I go the other way on, on, on this street, I'll be traveling towards town. You know what? Uh, I told you guys a minute ago to have at least $100,000 for a house in this area. Honestly, I would say if you find a fixer-upper or a foreclosure, you might be able to grab something like that up for $100,000. Other than that, I would say if you want to live in this area, you're going to probably want to come to the table with at least one hundred and twenty. dollars
Now maybe some of these little houses that I'm driving that I'm driving by right now, you might be able to grab some of these real small houses up for around 100. Turnkey movement ready, you might. But I'm gonna say if you're looking to live in this general neighborhood, just off the top of my head, I'm gonna say have at least $120,000 ready to go. take you guys through some bigger houses for those of you that got a little extra money Okay, I'm approaching East Third. Now we're gonna go down this street, which is a long uh, drive. And again, this is not the fanciest neighborhood in the city by any means. It's not the most expensive. I mean, this area that I'm driving in right now, it's a solid working class community. Now, some of these houses do come with decent sized yards. You have anywhere from a quarter to a half acre with some of these houses. Okay, I'm gonna cross over Range Line Road. And we're gonna go, we're gonna continue to travel Fifth Street. And I am now on the north, I mean, yeah, I am now on the north end of the city. Now in a little bit here, we will be going back towards the we, in a little bit here, but we'll be going east a little bit, and then we'll be back in the northeast section of the city, but right now, this is North Anderson. Now, in North Anderson, some of your major roads are going to be cross, and it's going to be ranger line.
I'm gonna cross over. I will go down Ranch Line, but I don't want to get the sun in your eyes. So we're gonna go back down fifth. Now I'm gonna work myself towards Scatterfield. Okay, I'm back on wheel lawn. I'm going, I didn't want to quite go this way because of the sun, but oh well. Okay, now we're on East 8th. I'm gonna take you guys towards town here. Okay, now we're back to Scatterfield, or other words known as uh, as Indiana Nine. I'm gonna cross over, and I'm gonna be driving towards town a little bit. If I keep going straight, I'll end up in downtown. Now, right now, I'm on East Eighth Street. This is known as the northeast side of Anderson. We're gonna jump off here, at least for a minute. Now, uh, let's see.
and this is the sun. Go the other way here. I was gonna show you guys the area, but the sun keeps getting in the lenses. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to keep that from happening. Now, I'm going to give you guys another real thumb about Anderson. Now, anytime that you're on a uh, lower number street, I mean, well, it ain't, man, I uh, can't even talk. Here's another rule of thumb up about Anderson. If you're on a street like this one, uh, East 8th Street, which the entire 8th Street area is a relatively busy street, East 8th Street and West 8th Street, the entire 8th Street is busy, a lot of traffic, and this is another one of those roads that, this is, you know, this is a major road. So I would say for East 8th Street, the closer you are to Scatterfield, the better the community. I'm not gonna say that the communities that are closer in the town are necessarily bad communities. I'm gonna just say that your better communities are gonna be closer to Scatterfield. Because, I mean, I'm on East 7th right now, and like, whenever you're traveling on the northeast side of Anderson, I mean, you, I mean, if my opinion is you don't want to get too close to town, because when you get super close to town, that's when the, uh, that's when, the, that's when the neighborhood begins to deteriorate. So, I would say, like I, like I said, the closer you get to Scatterfield, the better off the community is. I mean, at this point, I'm getting a little close to town. But, you know, it's still okay. Okay, this must these must be new. I never seen these before. Like right now, the area. I mean, let's see. I'm gonna. I'm on Walnut. And I'm gonna cross over East Eight. I mean, at this point, I'm 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 close to the town. Now, the neighborhoods over here aren't necessarily bad, but in this general area where I'm at right now, there has been some, uh, there has been some activities that have transpired in this area. The type of activities that many people would not want in their community. I'll just put it like that. I mean, there's been a, I would say within the last a uh, couple of years or so there's been cases of home invasions yeah, there's been cases of home invasions in fact there's been a couple of cases in this neighborhood of home invasions within the last couple of years or so the homeowner exercised their Fifth Amendment rights and dealt with uh, and dealt with the uh, criminal so
So the area that I'm driving in right now, personally, I would not want to live here. And this is what I was talking about a minute ago when I mentioned that you don't want to live too close to town. This is what I was talking about. Now this area that I'm driving through right now, it's not as, in my opinion, it's not as bad as parts of West Anderson. But this particular area is one of those type of areas where if you're gonna live in East Anderson, if you're gonna if you're gonna live in East Anderson, I personally wouldn't advise that you live in th in, in this neighborhood. Like I said, the closer you get to scattered field, the better off you'll be. And although this video was meant to be a video showing the more desirable places to live in the city, just as a reference, I wanted to drive you guys into this. I wanted to drive you guys through this neighborhood. Now I'm going to work myself back to a scatter field and then we're going to look at some areas over there. I'm going to show you guys some areas that are to where you can purchase a home for around $100,000. So now I'm driving back to a scatter field. Down Nursery Road. Oh, well, now we're on East Ten. Okay, we're back to Scatterfield. And I think the area that I wanted to show you is going to be actually on the other side of Scatterfield. Okay, I'm on Fairfax Street and with this sun, it's going to be hard for you guys to see some of these areas. My apologies. Now, the area that I'm driving in right now, uh, this is going to be the, this is going to be the cheapest community that you're going to be able to live to where your, to where your neighbor's yard is not going to be looking like a freaking junkyard. 
you're not going to have people on the, hanging out on the corner doing illegal activities in the crime in the area in the immediate area is not going to be ridiculous so I would say in this area you know like I said, if you can find you a nice small house around here, like something small, you might be able to grab it up for around a hundred thousand dollars. Like these houses I'm driving by right now, you might be able to grab up one of these for around a hundred, some of the smaller ones. And this is the northeast side of the city. Okay, I'm gonna drive down East 9th for a minute. This is another one of those areas where you can find yourself a nice, small, straight to the point house that you might be able to grab up for around 100. 
and still be in a decent area of Anderson. And again, this video got way longer than what I've anticipated, but oh well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to be as informative as possible when it comes to living in Anderson. I know there's a bunch of you that don't have a lot of money to drop on a house, but nevertheless, you still want to enter in the home ownership club. And maybe you're looking at Indiana, you're looking at Anderson, because, you know, cities like this have been known to be some of the most affordable places to live in the country right about now. So, I want to try to be as informative as possible, which is why these videos are this long. Okay, this is East 7th. And the majority of these houses are real small, straight to the point. Now your lot sizes are not going to be the largest, as, as you guys can see. But again, I would say if you have at least $100,000, and I would say in this area, you can probably grab something for even less than that. I mean, this is another one of those areas where you can get you a small, straight to the point house. And still at the end of the day, be in a decent community to where the crime is not going to be ridiculous. You're not going to have unsavory people hanging out around the corners or around your property. There's not going to be a whole bunch of garbage all over the all over the streets and all over people's lots. going down Chester for a second here and now I'm going to drive down East 6 I'm going to drive down East 6 I'm on East 6 now again not a bad area now I'm gonna show you guys a house which I wish I would have purchased, but I got to it too late. And it's this house right here, this greenhouse. There's nothing special, there's nothing fancy, but it is in a nice quiet community. I'm going down Fowler now. Now you will find a few yards here and there that are trashed up, but for the most part, these are, this is not a bad area to live. This is, I mean, in my opinion, this would be the perfect area to live. Like if you're on somewhat of a tight budget, but you're still wanting to be a homeowner, this would be the type of area that come and purchase a house in, in my opinion.
okay, I'm going to travel down uh, more being streets. And I'm going to go down East 4th. Which way on East 4th? Which way should I go? Well, I'll go this way because the other way would be a dead end. Alright people, I'm on scattered field right now. I'm, I'm getting ready to turn down Lindbergh. Now Lindbergh Road is a relatively busy road, especially during the week with uh, school being right here. You got East Side Elementary School. Now uh, some people would say this is East Anderson. To be more specific, this is Northeast Anderson. And again, if you buy a house in this general neighborhood, you're doing good. Okay, I'm on Lindbergh at I'm on Lindbergh Road. And, and this is a very good neighborhood to reside in if you're looking to live in Anderson. This, this this neighborhood is is an excellent neighborhood and again it's not the fanciest it's not the most expensive it's just a solid working class community I'm not gonna go through any places that are real expensive because I'm doing these videos primarily for working class people like myself who may not have a quarter of a million dollars or greater to drop on a house. Okay, I'm gonna go down Rolling Hills. 
Drive, which is one off of Lindbergh Road. I'm on Brunswick Ray. Now I'm going down Yorkshire Road. Which looks like it's gonna be a dead end. Kings Mill Drive. Now we're set to live in this community. Uh, you're going to want to have a minimum. Well, I would say for some of these smaller houses, you might be able to grab one up for around 150. But I would say for a lot of these other houses, uh, you're gonna wanna come to the table with at least a couple hundred grand. back on Lindbergh. Alexandria Pike now. <coughs> and this area that I'm this the area that I'm driving through right now, like I told you a minute ago, some people might call it East Anderson. But to be more specific, this is Northeast Anderson, or some people might call it North Anderson.
I want to show you guys the park here, but I thought that drive right went to the other side, but it don't. I'm gonna drive down cross. And then from cross, we're gonna go back on uh, Scatterfield. back on Scatterfield. Alright people, uh, I'm going to end this video in a moment here. I'm going to drive you down scattered field and as I do, I'm going to give you one more piece of advice about Anderson when it comes to living in Anderson. Uh, if you're looking to live somewhere that's relatively quiet, low key, low crime, uh, to where your neighbor's yard is not going to be looking like a mini junkyard to where you're not going to have undesirables hanging out in your community my best you know the rule uh, uh, another rule of thumb that I would go by is the closer you get to the core of the city the worse the communities become so 
if you have the, I mean, I mean, basically, the, the farther that you live from the core of the city, the better, the, the, the better the communities are going to be, typically speaking. So, and when I say the core of the city, I'm talking downtown. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of your neighborhoods that are closer in the downtown, those are going to be the areas that are going to have the highest amount of crime, the highest amount of drug activity, and just in general, the highest amount of things that most people do not want in their community. So the farther out that you move from downtown, from the, from the city core, the better off you are. And hopefully the two videos I've made has helped you guys out in that regard. I know the videos were long, but I felt that these long videos were necessary to paint an accurate picture of the city of Anderson for those of you that are looking to move here. Even those that might come through and you look and you're here to visit. Alright folks. As always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Andrew's Life. And I hope you guys have a blessed one. And, you know, as always, I will see you guys on the next one. And as soon as I get a chance to stop, I'm going to cut off this camera.